Hi, I'm Peter Panagor, your narrator, reading three brief near-death experience stories for NDE accounts and for you. This story is titled, A Window into Heaven. I had a car crash in 2010. I died and returned to life. I saw angels and I saw heaven. The angel took me from the bottom of my car and took me through this big, dark space. I was flying high in the sky. I saw my dead body in the car, but I didn't realize yet that I was actually dead. This angel told me, come with me, don't worry, everything will be okay. I flew very fast. This angel was so beautiful, very white, shining like a diamond. The angel was made of light. It had no eyes, no details, neither male nor female, just a big light smile, which gave off an immense feeling of peace and love. He took me through a big, long, dark tunnel. I was terrified. I saw all my life's existence, my family, my birth, getting faster and faster until my death. Then, I realized I was dead. And boom, there was this huge, wonderful, illuminated place, an indescribable place. I was looking at it like from a big window. It was heaven. The angel showed me two rivers flowing close to a big, beautiful tree. On my right side were lovely, colorful birds. And to my left, I saw a couple of angels with two kids smiling in divine happiness. I saw a source of water and the source of light. It's not like the sun. It was very powerful, but it doesn't hurt the eyes. It wasn't warm, hot, or cold. I was smiling and very happy to be there. Everything there was just green, colorful spaces. All was moving and expansive. All was light and beautiful. There was no crying, no screaming, just peace and love. I felt a strong feeling of unconditional love there. There was no feeling of time or space. All was moving there like a large, magical symphony. Then the divine voice of the angel asked me to welcome a hug from this big tree. He told me, this is a tree of knowledge. Take from it. I saw the big tree coming towards me, and then I embraced it like a big hug, and suddenly I was filled with a download of information. A divine voice said to me, this will be your place. If you accept to live with your new body and accept your illness, if you accept it, it will be your new place. My soul said yes. I was very happy. Then the voice said to me, so now return to your body, return to life. Then I did. And ever since that experience, I cry almost every day, missing the most beautiful place I'd ever seen. I'm not the same person anymore. I live with an illness now, but very happy to have been there. Heaven exists. God is full of love and loves us more than anything. The angels were so beautiful, lovely, and magical. I wish every believer on earth could go to this place, even the people who don't believe. I cry so much for them. If only people knew what heaven is, they would cry every day for the whole of their existence. They would understand that this is just material life. It's just an illusion. Heaven is more real than this material life. Heaven is big and undescribable and a lovely and divine place where souls are in happiness and love forever. Angels are so beautiful. They're made of light a powerful, shining light. They're just love and peace, like God. I felt the love of God there, 
and now I live with those beautiful memories of my travel and waiting and working to get there very soon. I hope. This story is titled, Father's Return. I had an NDE on July 5th, 2016. I had overworked myself in the yard on July 4th that year. It was close to 100 degrees, and the humidity was unbearable. I remember I drank nothing but soda all day, which doesn't rehydrate at all. I woke up at 4.28 in the morning of July 5th, having to use the bathroom, but as I tried to get out of bed, I had this extreme pain in my side, like a side sticker on steroids. I just slid to the floor. And what seemed like the very next moment, I heard my mom saying, Stephanie, what's going on? Are you okay? I opened my eyes and saw the time. It was 8.32 a.m. That's when I heard my mom talking to 911, and that's when my soul was suddenly in what I have referred to as the hub of heaven. I was standing on what seems to be a cliff overlooking the night sky, and I saw millions upon trillions of what I thought were shooting stars at first. Then I realized that what I was watching were not stars, but souls entering and leaving heaven. The ones leaving were about to be born. The ones entering had just left a physical life. The most amazing thing of all was the intense feeling of unconditional love in this place. There's no way for me to explain how surrounded and engulfed by love you feel when you're standing at heaven's door. All of a sudden, I felt the energy of the soul who was my dad in his most recent life standing next to me. I didn't see him as physical self, but I knew that the soul there with me was him. I heard him say to me, I'll see you soon, kid. And just like that, I was on what I perceived as a water slide, and bam, I was back in my physical body. My eyes shot open, and the paramedic said, Welcome back. I honestly thought we'd lost you. I said, I honestly think you're right. I was just in heaven and saw my dad. The paramedic said, well, I'm thankful he sent you back because I haven't lost anyone yet and I didn't want to have to say today was the day I lost my first patient. What was heaven like? I found out that day I was three and a half months pregnant with my son who's now four years old and there are times I swear my dad is whispering in his ear telling him what to say or do. I honestly believe that what my dad meant when he said he would see me soon was that he was coming back to Earth as my son. This story is titled, A Grandmother's Love. I got up on my birthday on July 17th, and I just wasn't feeling very well. I was kind of feeling under the weather. And I took some medicine and found out I was deathly allergic to it, and I didn't know it at the time. I paged my husband, and from there, I just started going in and out. I started to black out. The next thing I clearly remember was being in the hospital. I knew I was there. I could hear things, but I wasn't really conscious. And then, the next thing after that, I remember was seeing myself on the emergency table, and they were working on me, trying to revive me. You're in a kind of limbo. You're down there, but your conscious mind is up above, looking down, going, why am I down there and up here at the same time? But I can see myself down there, and it doesn't make sense. I couldn't understand because I didn't remember what happened to me. I couldn't remember anything. And then I started hearing conversations. 
I went to look for my husband because that would be the first person I would look for. I saw him talking to the doctor about me, and I started listening in. What are they talking about? And they were saying, We're going to do everything we can for her, but we don't know. And of course, my husband got upset. And I saw, I have four children, I saw what my children were doing. They were kind of running around like four children would do. And the doctor just said, We're doing everything we can turned around and left. I watched to see what my husband was doing, and he was kind of upset, and he was talking to the kids. I followed the doctor back into the emergency room, and they kept saying, I don't know what to do with her. I don't know what the problem is. And they'd given me an epi shot, if, like, you're allergic to maybe bee stings or things like that and they were trying to bring me out of it. And I guess I didn't work right away, and it took some time to bring me out. After I saw the doctor talking to my husband, I kind of drifted off for a while, and I guess I closed my eyes. And all of a sudden, the next thing I remember was standing there, and I saw this long hall, this bright white light, and lots of clouds. And then all of a sudden I saw my grandmother and I kind of freaked because I knew she'd passed away 13 years ago. And then I really panicked. I thought I must be dead. How else would I see her? And I remember I saw her standing right in front of me, clear as a bell. And she looked wonderful. I knew who she was. She came right up to me and said, Cindy, you shouldn't be here. You go back and take care of your family. It's not your time. I kept saying, Grandma, why am I here? And she said, There's been an accident, but it will be explained to you in time. Just wait, but take care of your family. She kept trying to tell me to go back, so I turned around. And I went back, but I couldn't figure it out until I came out of this, and I sat and I thought about it, and then I realized what had happened. That I'd made the decision, I feel consciously, not to stay there. If I maybe put up a fuss, maybe I wouldn't have had to come back. But I wanted to raise my family. Thanks for listening to NDE Accounts. This has been Peter Panagore. MDiv, international best-selling Audible author and two-time near-death experiencer. Check out my first NDE by clicking the end video screen. Join me on my YouTube channel live for Not Church, Mysticism, No Doctrine, No Dogma, Deconstructing Religion Through the Lens of Near-Death Experience. Subscribe here for more NDE accounts. Peace.